to work with Robert Eggers, I saw The Witch, and I thought, wow, there's a talent here. Um, how did this guy do this film? Because it was a period film that was so easy to enter. Nothing pushed me out. Um, so I, I met with him, and we said, let's do something together. And then later he approached me and said, I have the project. Here it is, you and Rob Pattinson, read it. Yes or no? What's a timber man want with being a wiki? It's looking to earn a living. It's like any man. Starting new. On the run. I'd seen The Witch, Robert's previous movie, like, when it was in theatres, I think, and loved it. And um, I wanted to work with him, and I met him f maybe over a couple of years um, about a couple of other projects, and... They were really great, but it was, I think both the parts he wanted me to do were period parts and they're both very English and there's something I get very frightened about <laughs> doing, doing that. And I sort of quite flippantly said at the end of one of the meetings, I was like, look, basically all I want to do is like stuff that's like really, really weird and crazy. And the next day he said like, oh, yeah, me and my brother are working on this thing. Like, and I think if this isn't crazy enough, like I don't know what to tell you. And uh, I read it and I was like, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty <laughs> this is pretty wild. Rob Eggers, he's the freak researcher, and I just knew he would make a complete world. And then you have this beautiful elevated language that was a real challenge and very beautiful to perform. Um, there were there were many pleasures. Of course, you always just kind of intuitively uh, anticipate these things, but. So I'm saying that in retrospect, you know, who knows really why I did it. I was attracted to it. And I say, you swab it again, and you swab it proper like this time, and you'll be swabbing it 10 times more after that. And if I tells you to pull up and apart every floorboard and clapboard of this here house and scour them down with your bare bleeding knuckles, you'll do it. And if I tells you to yank out every single nail from every mold and nail hole and suck off every speck of rust till all them nails sparkle like a sperm whale's pecker and then carpenter the whole light station back together from scrap and then do it all over again, you'll do it! And by God and by golly, you'll do it, smiling lad, cos you like it! You like it cos I says you will! Aye, right, sir. Swab, dog. Swab. I remember just asking Robert Eggers right at the beginning, just what I thought was a pretty basic question, which is like, is this stuff actually happening? Like, or is it a magical island? Or like, is, and also like, wh whose perspective is the story being told from? Like, does, do any, does, is this even happening? And he's like, mm, you have to decide that for yourself. <laughs> so it's kind of, and it's kind of, it's fun to play something where you don't really know, even though there's only two people in it, like, I'm almost certain that me and Willem are in, uh, have an entirely different perception of the movie, especially when we were shooting it. Robert Eggers is probably thinking it's an entirely different movie too. So it's kind of, it's a pretty fun thing when there's only three people in it and everyone's <laughs> making something totally different. <laughs> You can't play backstory, you can't play where you were grown up, you can't play whether you're a good guy or a bad guy. You can play your actions. And sometimes you make choice, you have to direct your intentions so you are making some decisions. But usually they're pretty intuitive and in a simple story like this, they're, they're pretty clear. You're just using different um, strategies to survive. This story is so elemental that um, that's, that's the beauty of it, to see when identity starts to get stripped away, how this guy tries to survive. And of course, then we had the real parallel, the tangible parallel in this horrible weather, in very difficult shooting conditions. It was all tied to how do you survive? Hark! Hark! Triton! Hark! Hello! 
bid our father, the sea king, rise from the depths full, foul in his fury. Black waves teeming with salt foam to smother this young mouth with pungent slime. To choke ye, engorging your organs till ye turn blue and bloated with bilge and brine and can scream no more. Only when he, crowned in cockle shells with slithering tentacle tail and steaming beard, take up his fell befinned arm. His coral tine trident screeches banshee-like in the tempest and plunges right through your gullet. All right, have it your way. I like your cooking. Of course, you're shooting in black and white. Your, uh, the, how you're lighting it is very specific. That does affect you. Um, also, you're not shooting coverage. You've got very designed shots. There's no fallback position. So that affects some, somewhat your relationship to how it's being recorded, what, how the event is realized. You're aware of that. You don't obsess on it, but you're aware of it. So if the camera's going to be behind you for a whole shot, you get a pretty good idea that they're never going to see your face, right? So you just, that's information. So, but does it affect how you do what you're doing? Not really. Not really. Because you're doing what you're doing. Well, you can see in the parts that Willem's chosen, there's a perversity to him. Like he definitely likes uh, parts that... Um, you know, like they're even however dark a part is, they play, there's something entertaining, there's something kind of, there's a, he definitely likes like naughty things. And, uh, and I kind of like err uh, towards that side of things for my taste as well. And uh, so I knew that doing stuff with him, it's kind of, you know, you can, you can do all, there are some really dark scenes in it, but you're sort of playing it because it's kind of, it's, he'd get the humor and, and it's then there's a sort of strange playfulness to all the stuff as well um because that his willem's part especially could have just been so dark and uh and he i don't know it's it's i find him very funny in it we had very different ways of working but you accepted that and uh you appreciate that because our roles are different and it makes sense because we're different places in our career. We're, you know, he's young enough to be my son. Um, and, and how we function in the story is different. So I think we worked well together because we work together. But uh, beyond that, you know, you deal with what's in front of you. And I'm sure he feels the same way. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. I did this movie years ago called Cosmopolis, where I realized you you can sort of approach a character in a movie like the same way that you're a singer approaching a song which you haven't written. Like you don't necessarily have to have an in-depth psychological history which you can quote at any moment. Like it's just feel. If you keep reading the lines again and again and again, you're looking for the ways that feel nice. And there's there's a kind of there's a pleasure which, um, like when you're tuning guitar strings and then the two strings get in harmony with each other, there's something which you find. And you can't, like, define what that feeling is, but it's just like, oh, it just feels really nice. And I've started to just try and do parts like that. And, it kind of, and it's difficult to do it when you you have to be working with, like, certain directors who sort of accept that approach, um, or you just keep it secret from them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the poetry. It's the poetry that challenges us, us to think in different ways, see things anew, remember things that we've forgotten. Um, you know, it's a, it's a mind changer. Uh, it's not just an exercise in recognizing, you know, it's recognizing a, a familiar story and empathizing. It, it, when it's best, it goes beyond that. It opens us to mystery and, and wakes us up. I think that's what's great about cinema. Um, and this has, has all kinds of uh, food for that.